Hey friends. So I had a um I had an experience yesterday with Annalise that was very emblematic of <laughs> parent child relationships, especially at this age of almost four. Annalise will be four a month from tomorrow. And and it, and it was a beautiful little little kind of nugget to hold on to as far as remembering what it's like to communicate with a child and to and being uh, aware of what's really happening. Um, but it, and then it also extended out into just a perception of of the world and and the way that I uh, engage with the world in general. And so basically what happened was we, it was nap time. We, we, I let it get a little late for nap time. Uh, although not horribly, but just a little past the optimal window. And I was trying to get in and my, my mom said to the airport. So <clears throat> house is emptying out. You know, Omi is going away. She knows she's gonna miss Omi, so there's a bit of a threshold happening. Um, and she didn't want to go to sleep, and she 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 was she was clearly exhausted. I thought at lunchtime we were gonna have a really easy time going down because she was tired and she seemed ready to to go take her nap. And then we get to the we get to the bottom of the stairs to go upstairs into her bedroom and she just refuses to go upstairs. No, I won't go upstairs. I don't want to go upstairs. And I was like, well, what do you mean? You can't, you bet. Uh, uh, it scrambled my brain. And I was in that, I was in that momentary d dad state of, but, but, but you can't, but that's, that's illogical. You can't possibly, this is, this is not, this is not an option. This is a, this is an illogical proposition. My, my my mind is like, well, but then how do next steps? What are the next steps? What ah ah, <laughs> falling apart. And and I um, you know, and I start. I kind of started with like, well, hun, that's not an option. We're not we're not gonna just sit here at the bottom of the stairs. She wanted to go nap in Omi's bed, the king size bed in the master bath, or master bedroom. That my my mom had just vacated the room, and I, and I was like, what, "What on earth? No, you're not sleeping in that bed. That bed is about to be turned down." So anyway, she was giving me the kind of like run around, and I, I I recognized this moment. I didn't really recognize it that much at the time. Um, but there, there was a moment where it was like the, 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 the stereotypical moment of negotiating with a toddler. She's not really a toddler. She's a young kid now. But, you know, like the reason why we have that expression, it's like negotiating with a toddler, is because toddlers are famously unreasonable and intransigent and don't give an inch in their fixation to a certain position. And I had that moment of, you know, there was one of these questions that comes up over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in parenting, which is what's my leverage here? When my child is either demanding to do something or refusing to do something or whatever, in some way, not, not um, either not cooperating or, or just creating a situation where some action has to be taken as the parent. And it's like, what's my leverage? Do I just steamroll her? Do I pick her up kicking and screaming and carry her upstairs? That's usually not the best way to kick off nap time. Um, so I kind of just feathered it a little. I just kind of, kind of, was was soft because I could also tell you know I was like okay we're like seven days deep into not seeing mom grandma's going away 
uh, Grand, Grant Newt, my her grandfather, left yesterday, or two days ago now. And I, and every time that happens, I recognize it as a moment, of, of a kind of a threshold moment for her. It's, it's something's changing and she has to, she's gonna miss that person. It's a new, now we're in a new, there's a new constellation of energies in the house. And it really affects young people. So I was trying to be conscious of all that. I was, I was doing an okay job of, of holding all that and realizing, okay. So anyway, so then I, I remembered something that we'd done earlier in the day that was fun, was just playing with throwing, throwing her stuffed animal around upstairs. So I kind of reminded her of that. And she sort of like took it in and then she said, can we do that for one minute before nap time? And I was like, yes, yes, we, we can do that for one minute before nap time. So she went upstairs, we threw her stuffed animal around for a minute. And then she walked into her room and said, I wanna to go to sleep like an adult. Closed the door, climbed in bed, went to sleep. No, no reading a book, no nothing. She just put herself to sleep in, you know, one minute. And I had this recognition that it's good to have periodically as a parent that even at precisely at the moments when it feels like our children are the most insane and the most inflexible, unreasonable, illogical, nothing makes sense and they and they and they they for some reason are fighting tooth and nail for a position that they want to defend or a thing they want to do or a thing they don't want to do there's this these those those moments of like what ah, how do we move on because it like it, it's like it freezes life and nothing can happen until the next step is somehow taken precisely in those moments there the there i mean I, can, I guess i can only speak for my daughter but she's often a hair's breadth from rolling right into the next thing that needs to happen in a in a in a, in a totally cooperative way and not that she will necessarily always cooperate as sort of willingly as she did yesterday. But the distinction for me between the moment that she was claiming she was in, which is, no, I won't go nap. I don't want to sleep. I'm not tired, you know, bawling her eyes out with fatigue. Not tired. And I won't even go upstairs because upstairs is where my bedroom is. From that, we got to playful and I'd like to put myself to sleep in the space of an ineffable moment of just a slight shift. And it's really good to remember that that happens and that that can happen. Because sometimes when I'm negotiating with her in those moments, I start to just think, well, this, well, life no longer works under these conditions. It's just, what are we gonna, uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> it puts me into that frozen state of, well, but, but nothing, but no, I mean, I just can't possibly, we have to, like, something has to change, but, but, or, you know, you, it just scrambles my brain and puts me in a state of like, well, this isn't gonna work, so how do I, you know, what heavy-handed thing should I do to fix this? And, um, so it's a, it's a wonderful lesson to remember in parenting. And it's also a really beautiful metaphor for life because life is like that too. Life also, when, it's, when life is saying, hell no, I won't go, nothing, 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 nothing works. It's like we have a golden opportunity 
to know that this barrier that looks like a brick wall might just be a piece of rice paper. It might be it might be gauze. It might be something that will that the slightest breeze will blow away. And that we don't need to steamroll what we want onto the situation. We don't need to to plow our way through with effort because you know, sometimes it, life, you know, life is subtle. Sometimes it's just a slight shift in our own thinking that changes what we're after. And then all of a sudden the barrier doesn't look the same or in the same way that like Annalise became all of a sudden something, just something sparked fun in her being reminded of playing with her toy for sparked a, a different energy in her. And all of a sudden the same thing, going to sleep, taking a nap, look totally fine to her. So I think what I'm trying to kind of come around to is the whole idea of negotiating with a toddler. It's good to remember that we are also the toddler. The toddler is also us. If we, you know, and, and the thing about, this is the thing about, the, about mirroring in, in relationships and mirroring in parenting. If the toddler comes to us with this non-negotiable position that feels irrational, illogical, you know, impossible, it activates that in us. And all of a sudden now we're a toddler too. And if we, and from there, there's not a lot of progress going to happen. You know, from there, we're really kind of stuck. But if instead we can let that impulse hit us and let us and, and remind us there's something immediately behind it there's something right behind this this completely non-negotiable and seemingly you know insane position right behind it there's something that i can that that i most likely that i can not only understand but that i can even fully relate to and fully, um, and and that, that will be fully functional, fully, full that will that will change the situation profoundly. If we can remember that, I think it can be a good thing for life, and certainly for our blood pressure when we're talking to our kids. So that's what I got today, folks. Thanks for watching. Much love. Appreciate you. See you tomorrow.